Welcome to AWS In Orbit. I'm Maria Varmazas. We're working with AWS to bring you an in-depth look at the transformative intersection of cloud computing, space technologies, and generative AI. On AWS In Orbit, we're exploring not just what's possible, but what's meaningful in the realm of space and cloud innovation. We grapple with the complex challenges and unparalleled opportunities that arise when we use space to address pressing issues right here on Earth. Episode 4, Degas in Ghana, Empowering Small Farming Through AI and Space Technologies. Yohei Nakayama, Chief Technology Officer at Degas Limited, shares how his company is revolutionizing small farming in Ghana through AWS's cloud, AI, and space technologies. In this compelling conversation, we learn about Degas's innovative use of generative AI to promote regenerative agricultural practices. Yohei provides insights into case studies that demonstrate the transformative impact on local farmers and the environment. First, let's hear from Yohei. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I'm Yohei Nakayama, CTO at Degas. And my background is a little bit like research oriented. I started my research career in the space technology field. Uh, during my PhD course, uh, I used a supercomputer to simulate the space environment and verified its accuracy using satellite observations. And after I got my PhD, I shifted uh, my field a little bit and joined AWS in 2017. And this was because I felt the potential of cloud computing. And at AWS, I uh, mainly worked uh, in the machine learning field. As a data scientist, I developed machine learning solutions in a wide range of domains. And it was a great opportunity and for me. I learned a lot how to use ML for real world programs. And, but when I met Doga, uh, founder of Degas, he introduced me to the concept of Degas. And I thought that I could utilize my background of space technology and machine learning. So I uh, I decided to join Degas as a CTO, and at Degas, I'm using satellite observation and machine learning techniques to help African farmers to increase their income. And now that we've met Yohei, to help tell the story of how Degas is improving the lives of farmers in Ghana through AWS technology, we're going to bring in another voice now to the conversation. Hello, I'm Emma Hidashikawa, and I'm a solutions architect on the aerospace and satellite team at AWS. And what that means is I support space industry customers in achieving their missions through designing and implementing solutions on AWS. I originally started my career in a very different field, actually as a mechanical engineer, uh, in the automotive industry. And during my time there, I witnessed what I felt were a lot of challenges and inefficiencies in the design process. And that made me start thinking about how that could be transformed by new technologies like the cloud. And so that's what prompted my transition to AWS. On the aerospace and satellite team, um, our team is a a dedicated team that combines space industry experts with cloud expertise um, with the ultimate goal of optimally supporting the needs of our customers in the space industry. And so um, I'm now working in an area that I'm very excited. I've always had a passion for, and I'm extremely excited to be supporting customers like Deas today who are really tackling head on these really significant global challenges. 
Fantastic. Thank you both so much for those wonderful introductions. Uh, Yohei, you did a wonderful job bringing us into sort of how you started at Degas and what brought you there. So I thought next it would be a great time for us to talk about what Degas is doing. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, let me explain uh, Degas' mission first. So our mission is changing uh, people's lives dramatically. So the term uh, people here is specifically refers to African farmers. And what we are doing is like uh, Degas platform is providing financial opportunities with farmers and implementing data-driven precision farming. So let me explain uh, a little bit uh, financing part first. So it's like in-kind financing. So spe specifically, we purchase fertilizers and seeds and from major agro-input companies and provide them as a loan to farmers. And after the financing part, we start the precision farming part with the farmers. So at Degas, we are hiring around 100 agents across Ghana, and the agents work together with the farmers to grow their crops in an optimized way. And because of that, the land productivity greatly increases. Eventually, the income of the farmers are increasing. So that, that's what uh, Degas is doing, uh, basically. I would love to know a little bit more about uh, specifically how Degas is achieving this mission uh, using AI and space-based data. How does that come into play? Yes. So uh, basically, to realize this business, uh, we are developing two main data streams. Uh, one is coming from ground. So our agents are using uh, our in-house uh, Android application. And it's like boots on the ground data collection. And the main second uh, data stream is coming from the Earth observation. We are collecting many types of observation data, like both uh, optical and radar satellite observation data, and to analyze the farmlands. And basically, uh, and we are the two data streams uh, forms a data lake on the cloud. And we are using the data lake uh, to analyze the farmland and create uh, machine learning models. For example, the machine learning models is like for uh, detecting floods or drought or calculate farmers' credit or uh, predicting yields. So that's how we are using uh, technologies. Let's pause for just a moment in the conversation for a bit of additional context on the technology at work here and how it's being used throughout Africa to improve the lives of people who are being disproportionately affected by climate change. How can these somewhat abstract concepts like big data via cloud, machine learning, and space data make a real positive impact in people's day-to-day -day lives? Well, this is the kind of question that is exactly the domain of expertise of Zimbabwe-based space law and policy analyst Rivimbo Samanga. So I asked her for her perspective. I think the first and foremost aspect of development that we can look at is obviously economic development, the contributions that data will have to fostering or bolstering different sectors. So for instance, there's agriculture that could benefit much from the predictive analysis on crops and how we can optimize our yields. We could also have an impact in disaster management and risk assessment, looking at weather forecasting data that can help us be more prepared. There aren't a lot of weather stations in Africa that give African institutions the indigenous capacity to sort of um, look towards the future and prepare for natural disasters. We've seen, for instance, in 2019, there was a very devastating cyclone, Idai, which devastated about three Southern African countries mainly, and over 900,000 people were displaced. And of course, this might have been mitigated with more allocation of resources. 
still on the economic front, we can look at data as a huge tool for decision making, not only in these different sectors, but also in organizational settings as well. The more data you have, the more you can make data driven decisions, as cliche as it sounds. And we then see from that perspective that these solutions like Amazon Web Services that give us an opportunity to put all of this data in one place, in an actionable place, um, and on these platforms where it's also easily shared across different users is also very helpful for growth of institutions and organizations as a whole. Back to Yohei now for more on the challenges farmers are facing in Ghana specifically. Yeah, so basically, well, when it comes to Ghana, the mobile network is not stable and electric system is not stable. And how to access like high quality of fertilizers and seeds, uh, which is a little bit lacking. So we are developing farmers credit to provide uh, financing opportunities. So that's one challenging part and how to scale uh, our business, which is also challenging. So for that, we are uh, developing our in-house uh, Android application, I, uh, as I stated. And, uh, and for that, uh, we are collecting tons of data to calculate the credit. Excellent. All right, so we're, we're talking about large amounts of data. Um, how is that being processed? Is that something that Degas is doing? Is that something that you needed help with? Or, or how, what's, what's happening there? Mm -hmm. So, for example, there is uh, one operation called uh, farm mapping. So, at the operation, for example, farm agent go to the farmland with the farmer and walk around the farmland. And then the, the Android application collect the series of location uh, where the agent worked. And we can get the uh, figure of the farmland. And the data is uh, sent to the uh, cloud. And on the cloud, we uh, map our observation data to the polygon and, and calculate, for example, vegetation index to check the farmland and the uh, status of the farmland. That's how we are uh, merging uh, local data to observation data. So let, let's talk a bit about the big picture. Um, I, 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 the motivation for Degas to, to be in Ghana, to be in Africa, and solve and help solve these incredibly difficult challenges, like let's set the stage and get a sense of what are the challenges there, especially in the face of climate change. Uh, so Africa compromises approximately 17% of the world population although it only contributes actually less than 4% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But despite that, um, Africa is already contending with some of the harshest impacts of climate change. That includes extreme heat, you know, drought, desertification, flooding, and that really heavily impacts especially agriculture and food production. And this is especially devastating in Africa because more than 60% of the population of sub-Saharan Africa are smallholder farmers. That means a majority of the population depends on agriculture for their livelihoods. And of course, this contributes to growing food insecurity, displacement, and conflict in the region. Um there's a phrase that came up uh, a number of times about regenerative uh, agriculture. Yohei, could you walk me through what regenerative agriculture means? So regenerative agriculture has a lot of like definitions, but basically there uh, it's a, a way of agriculture uh, which can uh, issue carbon credit. So it's it has two meaning, which is it's sustainable, sustainable way, and at the same time, it reduces uh, CO two emission. So we are doing regenerative agriculture uh, with the farmers, and it's a little bit uh, difficult or complicated way, but 
uh, using our Android application and the chatbot, uh, we are expanding this regenerative agriculture in Africa. Wonderful. Okay. So we have this incredibly sophisticated chatbot that runs on a large amount of data. It also runs on an AWS service. Um, Emma, could you walk me through a, a little bit about that, please? Yes, of course. Uh, that's correct. So the chatbot that Degas is currently building runs on Amazon Bedrock. Uh, and Amazon Bedrock is a service AWS recently announced that lets customers easily build and scale generative AI applications in AWS. And the first thing is through Bedrock, AWS offers access to a number of high-performing foundation models or FMs, and all this through a single API. Uh, currently, Bedrock provides FMs from Amazon as well as from leading AI providers like uh AI21 Labs, Anthropic, Cohere, Meta, and Stability AI, all through a single pane of glass API. Um, and there's two, I think, key features uh, of Bedrock that Degas has really leveraged in the solution we're discussing today. Um, and the first one is the ability to easily experiment with and compare the performances of different foundational models for a specific use case through things like playgrounds and the single pane of glass API. Um, the second is the ability to create custom solutions um, integrating existing AWS services and also using your own proprietary data in AWS with techniques such as retrieval augmented generation or RAG. And especially to the second point, I think, I think Degas' solution is very exciting because it leverages the power of other AWS services like Kendra for searching scientific papers and agricultural journals, um, also retrieving like farmer metadata from RDS, an RDS database, and also Athena to leverage and search Degas's existing data set in S3. Yohei, is there anything you wanted to add uh, to that about how Degas is using AWS? Uh, yes, when it comes to the good points of Bedrock, I want to add one point. Uh, like It's an API-based service, so we, we don't have to uh, manage the uh, infrastructure. So we can easily use that without any like uh, management. That's really helpful for us. And when it comes to the uh, chatbot, yes, uh, for us, uh, how to scale uh, precision farming and regenerative agriculture, which is really important, but these two methodologies are really complicated. So how to teach or how to tell the way is really important. And for that, we are using the chatbot. And so with that, we don't have to hire so many agronomists, right, in Ghana. It's really costful. So we can uh, expand this business without uh, like a heavy cost. Uh, that's also a really important part. And how the app is working is that, for example, the agents uh, will ask several questions related to precision farming and regenerative agriculture. For example, the question will be like, what's the distance, best distance between planting trees, or uh, should I do tillage at this time, the kind of thing. So that's the main question type. But the answer is, uh, answer depends on the situation or the timing. So our, uh, on cloud, we are uh, checking the question and at the same time searching document our protocol or uh, research paper and also checking the farmland status, which is also uh, collected and uh, saved on our data data lake. 
And not only、uh, referring to the question, but referring to the condition of the farmland and our protocol, we are、uh, providing answer to the agents. So that's how、uh, we are、uh, operating the chatbot. I wanted to talk a little bit about the credit scoring model. Yohei, could you, could you talk a little bit about that model? Ah,、uh, yeah. So, yeah, there are a lot, of, a lot of data points. With that, we are calculating farmer's credit, which is our core technology,、uh, because with that, we, we can like,、uh, provide financing opportunities to the farmer. And how we、uh, calculate、uh, it's totally related to、uh, their yield, right? Because it's directly、uh, related to their income. The credit model、uh, consists of, for example, yield prediction model, land risk, for example,、uh, predicting flood or、uh, drought, scoring the distance of the seas, or、uh, checking how to apply our fertilizers to the farmland. So, all the kind of Things are also、uh, digitized and collected. And we are calculating, calculating uh, uh, credit using the、uh, ground data and、uh, our observation data. This is somewhat indirect and perhaps lesser known, but data from space and satellites is really integral to understanding and forecasting weather and climate. For example, there's What's called like the Global Precipitation Measurement or GPM, which is a joint mission between JAXA, NASA, and a number of other space agencies. And what they do is they operate a constellation of satellites that constantly measures ground precipitation,、um, atmospheric moisture around the entire globe. And that's not something that can just be captured by land based sensors. Uh, and the data from GPM really informs our understanding of global rainfall distribution and the global water cycle. And in light of Africa and climate change、um, impacts to Africa, that space data is, is especially important、um, where you know, we're seeing increased degrees of extreme weather events, droughts, storms, devastating rains. You know, not just in Africa, but also all around the world. So, space data, let's say, is impacting our lives on Earth. With regard to the credit scoring model,、um, I did want to mention to grow and support farmers in Africa while you know, also contending with climate change, farmers need you know, raw materials, farming supplies, and rates to market. And in the context of loans、um, and support, In the US, we have things like、uh, measures like credit scores that、uh, determine things like the loans that we can get or the mortgages that we can get. But of course, the, the same model can't really be translated to smallholder farmers in Africa. And so, what I find exciting、um, is what Degas is doing here is developing this AI based credit scoring model that. You know, helps determine the success and compliance of farmers in the program to you know, determine financing and also create a positive growth cycle. Absolutely. I think that's very valuable context, Emma, and I thank you very much for that. I, I think that's very helpful. When it comes to the macro impact,、uh, we requested a third party organization to create an impact report. And according to the report, 90% of contracted farmers saw some increase in their income. And 48% of them saw a significant increase in their income. Regarding to the quality of life, Uh, the report stated that the quality of life of 97% of contracted farmers improved. So, when even、uh, for like a macro pers- from macro perspective, yeah,、uh, we think、uh, we are、uh, like impacting to the farmers. And when it comes to the one specific successful story, I heard that one of our contract farmers' children. 
was able to go to university. Uh, yeah, because they could increase their income with Degas and they could manage to pay initial fee. Like much of this is due to his efforts, but uh, going to university is very expensive, right? So we could, we could eliminate the financial barrier, so which was a milestone for us. And also, uh, I think around two years ago, we uh, received a letter of appreciation from the president of Ghana, uh, Nana Akfo Adu. So yeah, we are thinking that uh, we found that our business is working very positively in Ghana. I would love to know the long-term vision that Degas has for uh, maybe its plans or its its impact or hopes for the future even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so one of our goal is uh, developing or forming uh, economic zone on our farmers' network. Before, like local min microfinancing companies could not touch small folder farmers in Africa. But we are increasing their income as well as calculating credits, their credit. So by providing the farmers credit to, for example, third party microfinancing companies, we will be able to provide not only agri-related financing, but also like various financing opportunities such as their children's student loans or motorcycle loans. So uh, that's our uh, next goal. My vision is that using uh, space technology for uh, peoples on Earth, uh, it's not only uh, African smallholder farmers, but I think for now, uh, even for large language model, uh, many scientists are using that. But how to use is also important. So I think like I want to use ML technique or space technologies for something like good. So for that, now at Degas, we are, I'm using these technologies for increase their uh, farmer's income. So my vision is now after increasing, increasing their income, like improving their quality of life or like creating economic zone or something like that. That's our, my uh, vision or that's why I'm uh, doing this. This is a wonderful collaborative effort. I love that. Emma, you have a really interesting perspective. I'm curious what you think about um, where these technologies can go, uh, how many customers are using them, and where you, where you see them taking this. Wow, that's a, that's a very big question. I like big questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that I can definitely say without a doubt is that I'm constantly surprised and excited and really blown away by the innovation and the ideas that come from our customers. And that's including Yohei-san and Degas and what they're doing, what they're seeking to do with the technologies. To be honest, AWS is a provider of technologies, but really the innovation happens at our customer end. And so it's that's what I want to support, um, so support the innovation of our customers, ideas of our customers that have really fundamental impacts and on the world. And um, that's where I get my, you know, everyday excitement to go to work. And that's where I see really the synergy between AWS services and ideas that our customers bring really moving forward the needle. Yohei, Emma, both of you, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate your time and your incredible insights. Thank you both so much. Yeah, thank you, Mari. Thank you. <laughs> 
And that's it for AWS In Orbit, Episode 4, Degas in Ghana, Empowering Small Farming Through AI and Space Technologies. A special thanks to Yohei Nakayama, Ruvimbo Samanga, and Emma Higashikawa for joining us. For additional resources from this episode, and for more episodes in the AWS In Orbit series, check out our show notes at space.ntuk.com slash AWS. This episode was produced by Alice Carruth and powered by AWS. Our AWS producer is Laura Barber. Mixing by Elliot Peltzman and Trey Hester, with original music and sound design by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producer is Jen Ivan. Our VP is Brandon Karp. And I'm Maria Varmazes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.